It's time to open our service for prayer this evening. Uh, let's remember, brother and sister Key, pray the Lord touch and heal her. Uh, he's able. Uh, where the doctors can't do, uh, the Lord still can. Uh, sister Ball said for us to remember Leslie and Connie. Pray, uh, pray the Lord to help them. Uh, remember Robert Hogan. Uh, they've moved him to a hospital. He's, uh, they're expecting him to not last much longer. He's got like three weeks by there. Uh, where they know what they believe, but the Lord can touch them and still heal him. Yeah. Uh, let's pray for a backside that's lost from our church. Anybody else have any special requests? Uh, Denny. Denny. Praise the Lord. I've got a good pastor friend of mine, one of my dear pastor friends. He's going through a, a real severe battle in his church right now. So pray for him. God help him. And he's trying to do what's right. And uh, he's going.
told you was right, but I'm afraid I've had to do this time. I remember this request. Now, any others? All right. There's no other. Just stand, go, Lord, in prayer. <coughs> Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time we have to come before you. Bring these prayers to God. Back in God's house again tonight. Uh, it's good to have Matt, Karina, and Reagan with us again this evening. All right. uh, let's be alive like the Lord is. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 7 explains that Jesus ministers in the power of an endless life. He represents us in heaven and we represent him on earth. So let's not misrepresent him and act like a, a dead church because we got a, a living Savior. Uh, a dead Savior can't help anybody, but we, we serve the one that lives in the uh, power of an endless life. So uh, let's represent him, uh, the one that's given us real life. And let's worship in spirit and truth this evening as Brother Baker comes ministering a song. Classic. Well, I know a man that's helped me through all my 
troubles and all my through all my life and I know he'll I know he'll continue doing that this man can do anything and his name is Jesus I can't take a heart that's broken make it over again but I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that sits in, make it white as the snow. But I know a man who can. Call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call him Jesus, for he, my dearest friend. When you feel no one can help you, and your life is out of hand, will I? Or calm the raging sea, but I know a man who can. I can't call blind eyes to open or make the lame to walk again, but I know a man. Some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call him Jesus, for he, my dearest friend. When you feel no one can help you, and your life is out of hand, will I? Make the lane to walk again, but I know a man who can. I can't call. I make the lane to walk again, but I. Him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call him Jesus, for he, my dearest friend. When you feel no one can help you, and your life is out of hand, will I? Nobody ever had a friend that was better than Jesus. And it doesn't matter how good anybody's intentions are, though. Somebody will let you down somehow, but Jesus is the only one that can carry you to the end. And this time we're going to save our offering for ushers to come. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Brother Albright, yes, Lord, bless time of giving.
this time I'm going to ask the praise and worship team to come in and sing a song. Praise God. Let's stand up and sing tonight, please. Good to see this good looking number on a Sunday night. Amen. I believe Sunday night ought to be the same as Sunday morning. Amen. Yes. Church doors are open. Amen. 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 God's people go to church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. to sin and things that confound not of the world shall turn me around daily i'm working i'm praying to and glory to god i'm going through he set me free yes he set me free and he broke If the comforter is not abiding with you, you don't have a reason to rejoice. There's a reason to be afraid. But if he's abiding with you, you can rejoice in him. This time we're going to have a search over Pastor Brother Shelton. Amen. Thank God for the comforter. Praise God for the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. I'm glad 
the old economy, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord would come upon men. But in the new economy, the New Testament, after the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost lives within men. We can be full of the Holy Ghost. We should be full of the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus doesn't come just to bless us. Thank God for the blessings. But He saves us. He changes us to use us to be a witness in this life so that others can see Jesus in you and see Jesus in me. If they can't see Jesus in you, Jesus must not be in there. If he's in there, he's going to come out. You're going to manifest the fruits of righteousness. I told you recently, we're called to be fruit inspectors. We don't go around judging people. <clears throat> you don't go looking for fault in people. If you look for fault, you'll find plenty. You watch me long enough, you'll find something about me you don't like. So don't watch me too long. If you watch other people, you'll find fault with people. We don't look for fault in people. We look to Jesus. Jesus does a work in our lives so that we can be a light in the darkness of this world. So that men will want what we have and who we have. Can you say praise the Lord? I'm glad for the saving grace of God Almighty. Amen. Jesus saves us. He changes us. He sanctifies us. He separates us. And we do that. We separate ourselves from what we were before we got saved. I got born again. I didn't want any part of what I was before. How I lived, what I was involved in, I want to no part with that anymore. I found Jesus and everything I needed was found in Him. He prepares that vessel. <clears throat> if you've been born again, you have the Spirit of God living inside of you. If you don't have His Spirit inside of you, you can't call Him Father. There is a baptism of the Holy Ghost. A fullness of the Spirit of God. That Pentecostal experience, that outpouring of the Holy Ghost, where God will fill you full of the Holy Ghost and power. Not to make us shout more. Not just so we can get happy at church. Not just so we can talk in tongues. Amen. Some folks get so caught up in the tongue. But I'm going to tell you, that's just the initial evidence. <clears throat> there will be fruit in that life. There will be evidence in that life that the Holy Ghost has come. Jesus lives in you. And now we will be a witness of him, of the great things that we have seen and heard. Can you say amen? We're called to be fruit inspectors in the sense that we know when it's right and we know when it's wrong. I told you on Sunday night, I believe it was, or maybe Wednesday night, I can't remember now. Nevertheless, I told you we better make sure we are able to try the spirits, discern to know what's right and what's wrong. <clears throat> this is confusing times. People are calling good evil and evil good. What the church used to stand against, now they embrace. Things they used to say, this is wrong. We won't have any part of this. Today they embrace it. So we've got to make sure we know what this Bible says and live by the word of God. Can you say amen? <clears throat> if you live by the book, you're going to make it. If you live by this book, you can't go, you know, I, I know there's folks that hop from here to yonder, from church to church, and they watch this TV show and that TV preacher and that TV and they buy this book and this CD, you'll be so mixed up you won't know up from down. You need to know what that book says and stay in the word of God. <clears throat> a, lot of this, a lot of this experience with Christ is just absolute common sense. <clears throat> you start seeing people want to do things and say, well, it's okay now. You know, that's the flesh talking. I don't see anything wrong with having a glass of champagne once in a while. I don't see anything wrong with having a glass of wine with your meal. You start listening, that old flesh talking. But you fall in love with Jesus, all you want to do is please him. That'll be all you want to do is what pleases him. Can you say amen? Luke chapter 24 tonight, enjoyed the singing. Get to have Matt and Karina with us and Reagan. I love this family a whole lot. And uh, always glad when they're here. Glad to have all of you back with us tonight. Good to see Shona back tonight. Missed her this morning. Haley, Haley and Olivia, love them. We just love each one of you. Appreciate you. <clears throat> We're glad you're here. We're glad you come to church. It would be terrible to come out here and preach to empty pews. Nobody here. And I've done that before. During that pandemic, I had to preach to empty pews to a little camera back there. And I can tell you, just as sure as it's better being here, 
it's better to preach to people being here. Amen. Amen. We're glad you're here. And we just thank God for his goodness in each one of your lives. Luke 24 tonight. We want to begin reading in verse 44. Let's keep praying for Sister Blanche and their family. They're all doing better. they just, you know, riding this thing on out. And um, I'm glad God's keeping them safe. But keep praying for them. And uh, they'll be back soon, Lord willing. We want to pray for all the sick. There's a lot of sick people right now. And uh, pray for those families. We were talking about at lunch today, <clears throat> the Batten family. They've lost two. My, it's my second cousin, Kirk, passed away Thursday, 52 years young. And, uh, and then just a few weeks ago, Ricky, which is another second cousin of ours, Ricky Batten, same family, uh, died early 60s with cancer. And uh, so pray for that family. That's some of Granny's, uh, that was Granny's nephews. So pray for them. God will help that family and touch them. And as always, pray for lost souls to be saved in those families. Amen. Let's pray, Father. Thank you tonight. Glad to be in the house of God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your mercy and grace. And thank you that we can be partakers of your righteousness. And there is no good thing in us, Lord, but you live in us now. I thank you, Lord, for that touch of heaven and the taste of heaven. Lord, that we can be partakers of the blood of Jesus. We can be cleansed and washed and saved. All of our sins washed away. Our lives can be changed forever. I thank you that you're long-suffering. Thank you for your patience with us, God. You are the potter and we're the clay. I'm glad you don't just throw us away, Lord. Thank you for working on us, God. And I pray for the next little while, Lord, that you'll help me. As always, I need your help. Touch my voice, God. Help me to preach. Pray you'll anoint me, Jesus. And I pray that the hearts will be receptive tonight. I pray that our attention will be fully on you this evening, Lord. We're here, God, not to be seen or to see each other. But we're here to worship you and to learn of you. In your presence, in your house, on this holy ground. Touch us now. Touch those watching online. Bless services across the land tonight. And we'll praise you. And love you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Luke chapter 24, verse 44, and read him. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Somebody give him a hand of praise as you're seated tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. If you folks wouldn't preach me so hard on Sunday mornings, no, keep preaching me hard. Amen. I like it. I want to preach to you tonight on this thought the promised power. The promised <clears throat> power. Now, scriptures that I've read here to you this evening. Jesus is expounding on the events of his life, both his death and his resurrection. I'm glad he didn't just come to die. I'm glad that he died. But I'm glad on that third day he arose again, conquering death, hell, and the grave. He then tells his disciples that they've been chosen to carry the gospel of God to all the world. This was the great commission found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Jesus tells those disciples there on that Mount of Olives before he's taken back up to heaven, 
He tells them to go to Jerusalem and to wait there. Don't sing a song. Don't stop and preach somewhere. Don't even witness. But go to Jerusalem and tarry there. Stay there. Wait there until you're endued with power from on high. Until you've been clothed with the power of God. Then the Bible said Jesus ascend up in the glory at his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. Now Jesus is gone. For three and a half years these disciples have walked with the Son of God. I, I can't imagine what that must have been to walk and see him here in the flesh and to witness the miracles and to feel his presence, his touch, his love. To be able to hear the preaching of the Son of God. They had relied on Him. They had depended on Him. He had been faithful to them. But now Jesus is gone. He's ascended back there into heaven. And the disciples find themselves still in this world. They're afraid at this time. They're being hunted. They know that what those, those Pharisees and those religious people done to Jesus, they want to do the same thing to His disciples. They have a large task ahead of them in their call to spread the gospel. But the Bible says they obeyed the command of God. They obeyed the word of God. This is the key to Christian victory. Doesn't matter if you go to church or not. Doesn't matter if you sing in the choir. Doesn't matter if you do religious things. Amen. The key to Christian victory is obedience. The Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey God, to obey the Word of God, to obey the commands of God. How will we know to obey the Word of God if we don't study the Word of God? If we don't get in that blessed book? How we know to obey the Word of God if we don't go to church and hear the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God? The Bible says they're afraid there's fear in their hearts. We know that uh, their lives are in danger, but yet they put that aside uh, and they obeyed the command of Jesus. And they went to Jerusalem uh, and there they tarried in that upper room uh, for 10 days. And the Bible said they were endued, they were clothed with the power of the Holy Ghost uh, just like Jesus said that they would. And from there, they went out of that upper room, staggering around like drunk people. They were not drunk on earthly wine, but they were drunk on that heavenly power of God. And listen to me, friend. This world is not ashamed to get drunk out of that cup with poison in it. They're not ashamed to get drunk out of that bottle. They'll act a fool in front of their families, in front of people around them, people they know and don't know. I want to tell you we ought not to be ashamed to get full of the Holy Ghost, to stagger out there in that world under the power of God and be a witness of Jesus Christ. The Bible said they went out and they touched that world. In the power of God. Matter of fact, they made such an impact in that day. Brother Clinton said they're the only generation that reached their generation for the Lord. They went out, the Bible said in Acts 17 and 6, they were accused of turning the world upside down. The reason they were able to accomplish what Jesus had commissioned them to do was because they obeyed His word. They did what he said to do. There was a threat there. There was danger there. There was opposition there. But they put all of that aside and they obeyed God. They went to that upper room. They tarried there. They stayed there until the power of God came down. They were clothed in that heavenly power. And they went out and they got the job done done they received the promised power of God and they went out and were a witness for Jesus Christ here we are today now over 2,000 years as the church and look how far we are from that early church it just gripes my nerves and aggravates me to no end to, to hear preachers try to make the church after a business model we want to follow businesses to be successful in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible where God's called us to be successful. We're to be obedient. 
And if we're obedient, God will do the work through us. Amen. We're a long way from what that early church was here over 2,000 years later. This is not just in time, but also in power. Look at this generation. Look at this church age. We're organized greater than we've ever been. We have nice buildings. We have good music. We have nice pews. We have lights. Don't have to do this service by candlelight. Got nice lights overhead. We've got air conditioning in the summertime, so nobody has to have a street heat stroke in the house of God. We've got the heat to turn on in the winter time, so nobody has to sit cold in the house of God. We've got money in the bank, and many of our churches today uh, got preachers and teachers uh, have a complete copy of the Word of God. Most of us have at least one, maybe two or three Bibles uh, in our homes. Uh, we have everything that we need in this hour uh, to make an impact in this world uh, for Jesus Christ uh, except for the one thing that the early church had uh, and that was the promised power of God. Uh, that power from on high, uh, it was the difference in that early church. Uh, you listen to me here tonight. Uh, the Apostle Paul on his mission trip Trips. He didn't have a guitar to carry with him. He didn't carry an organ or a singing group. He didn't have mimes and clowns. But he said, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but was in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That early church, they didn't have music, singing groups to travel with them. But they had the power of God. And when they preached, amen, they done one of two things. Either men repented or men rose up and wanted to kill them. Either way, they preached the word of God and they went forth and God worked with them under the power of the Holy Ghost. We need that same power in the church again today. That was the difference in the early church. I don't ever I've been in this church a long time now, Pastor. And the Lord willing, I plan to stay here my entire till the Lord calls me home or the rapture comes. I hope God will let me stay here my whole ministry. I'm, I'm only 51, so, I, you know, I'm not looking to retire at 65. I plan to preach till I can't do it anymore. Amen. Plan to pastor till I can't physically do it anymore. I'm telling you, friend, I, I never tried to pattern this church after another church. Never looked at that church uptown. Never tried to find out what that church downtown was doing. Always tried to pattern after the early church. I'm telling you, this is what God started with. That early church is still the pattern today. They didn't have padded pews. They didn't have baby grand pianos. Peter said, we don't have any money. Silver and gold have I none. But what they had was that divine power, that touch of God upon their lives. And they went out and done what Jesus said to do. He made witnesses out of them. I want to tell you, friend, it'll still take this kind of power in this last day to make a difference in this lost and dying world. This power that clothed that early church must clothe us again. We've got to get dressed up in the power of God Almighty to make a difference and an impact in a day like today. Now more than ever we need the Holy Ghost we need to be full of the Holy Ghost, full of that power from on high. And Brother Clinton said, I listened to him this week a couple mornings in my devotions back here. I like to listen to preaching for about an hour in the mornings. And I was listening to him preach about the Holy Ghost. And he said, when I got saved and found out about the Holy Ghost, I wanted the Holy Ghost. I wanted that power from on high. He said, I come to a place where I said, I'm going to have the Holy Ghost or I'm going to die. 
That's where we have to come to in the church again. He said, my friend, that you're not ever going to receive this power just tearing and seeking in the odors once a month. You've got to come to the place where you say, I'll have the Holy Ghost or I'll die. I've got to have this power of God. I want to be saved. I want to be sanctified. And I want to be full of the power. I want that promised power in my, let me tell you something, friend. It'll make a difference in your home. It'll make a difference in your mind. It'll make a difference in your family. It'll make a difference in the job. It'll make the difference in the church. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to clothe us. Give me the Holy Ghost or I'll die. You've got to get so hungry for this power. They tell me only 6% of members in the church of God have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. How can we call ourselves a Pentecostal denomination when we're not experiencing Pentecost in the church? Brother Eddie, since Shut and I were talking about him last night, I believe it was, or maybe Friday night, we were talking about him recently. Brother Eddie got hungry for the Holy Ghost. Every service in those altars seeking for the Holy Ghost. Seeking for the Holy Ghost. You listen to me. If you can take him or leave him, you'll not receive him. But when you come to the place where I got to have this gift, I got to have this power, I want to be obedient to God Almighty. Brother Eddie kept coming again and again and again until on the Saturday night in revival, God gloriously, that's how I've told everybody I've told, God didn't just baptize him with the Holy Ghost, God gloriously baptized him with that power if I've ever seen anybody with the spirit of God just gushing up inside of them it was on that Saturday night right there it was like a well inside of him the Holy Ghost just bursting forth let me tell you something every child of God regardless of the denomination you need to get full of the Holy Ghost you need the promised power you need to get clothed in the power of the Lord. Oh my God. Jesus told those disciples go to Jerusalem and tarry. Stay there. Don't you leave that upper room. He said it to about 500. After 10 days in that upper room, 380 had left. We don't know what time they left. They may have left in increments of 20, 30, 50s. I don't know that. But what I do know is 120 obeyed him. 500 uh, were told on that Mount of Olives to go to Jerusalem. But on that 10th day in that upper room, only about 120 were still there. Wherever that hundred, other 380, maybe they made it to heaven. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. But at the end of 10 days, there were only about 120. But they tarried. They obeyed God. And on that 10th day, the Bible said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Listen to me. If you will tarry, if you get serious with God, you'll have one of those suddenly moments when suddenly there'll be a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind he'll fill you with that power he'll make you full of the Holy Ghost he'll change your life he's the difference in the life of the child of God they received this power this power that clothed them must clothe this church today if we're going to make a difference we don't need more things we don't need bigger buildings. Great God, we don't need more programs. We got enough programs to choke everybody in the house of God. We got to have a program for this and a program for that and a program for that program and a program for those programs. That won't keep you when all of hell's against you. That little handout on Sunday morning huh, won't keep you when the devil's breathing down your neck. 
those programs, amen, those little skits and those little drama shows, those little dance routines, Lord God help me here tonight, those little dance routines in the house of God that will not help you when all hell's against you, but the power of God inside of us, we got the power to put the devil to flight and to make a difference in the darkness that surrounds us. You can have your drama team. You can have your little dance teams. Oh, great God, how I got here, but I'm here. You tell me what in the world that's got to do with church. Having a bunch of teenagers in puberty that, that do synchronized dancing to some kind of Christian rock and roll song. I'm going back up here because some of you are mad at me tonight. I don't know what I've done to make you mad, but I'm just going to finish it on out here. What does that have to do with winning souls? You ain't going to dance nobody into heaven. You sure ain't going to dance the devil away with that kind of secular mess. The flesh profits nothing. It's still the spirit that quickens. Lord God, I'm telling you, if we'd get our teenagers in an order rather than on a stage teaching them dance steps, get them full of the Holy Ghost, there'll be a change in that schoolhouse. There'll be a change in that world one more time. Lord God, have mercy. Get them in an order praying through. If you'd spend that time rather than teaching them how to do how to do choreographed dance for the church to entertain the flesh, the flesh has to be entertained. And when the spirit's gone, that's all you've got left is entertainment. I said when the spirit's gone, all you have left uh, is, is entertainment uh, to entertain the flesh. Uh, listen to me, friend. I say it with a burden heart. Uh, amen. Uh, many of our churches today, uh, it's nothing more than an entertainment place. Uh, people go to get entertained. Uh, they want to be sang to. Uh, they want to be danced to. Uh, they want to have things that make them feel good. Uh, but listen to me. Uh, if every church uh, would lay on all that mess down and crawl into an order and say I'm going to stay here until I'm clothed with power from on high. It'll change the churches. I said it'll change the churches across the land. Raise your hands and praise him tonight for the power of the Holy Ghost. I take no joy in saying that, but it's the absolute truth. We're having to entertain people today because we've lost the presence of the Holy Ghost. People are not seeking the Holy Ghost around the altars. We're not preaching about the Holy Ghost. When I got saved, I mean, they told me, they got me in that altar. They didn't let me go. Hey, you know, I got down that altar. I had somebody on one side holding on, another one pulling at me. Sister Sharon's daddy, Brother Earl, was right down there beside me. Praise him, brother. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. They didn't hand on me. People praying around me. He been stayed in there with me. Help me pray on through to the Holy Ghost baptism. Oh, when I, the Holy Ghost baptized me. I tell you, I was there when I got saved. It was glorious, Sister Ball. I was there when God began to do that sanctifying work in me. It's a wonderful thing to know that you're clean before God. But the night that he baptized me with the Holy Ghost, I've never known such power. I never knew that kind of power was real. I've seen it in other people, I, but till I experienced it myself, I, I said, dear God, I, I want more and more I, of that power from on high. I, if you get hungry, I, he said, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. I, you shall be filled. Hallelujah. We don't need more things. We don't need more programs. We need to be clothed with power from on high. This power is a promise from God. Jesus had promised his disciples he would send them another comforter when he went away. 
He said in John 16 and 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Somebody said, how do you know Jesus made it back to heaven? I know he did. How do you know that, Brother Shelton? Because I got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. Got a comforter living on the inside of me. He said, it's necessary for me to go away. For if I go not away, I can't send the comforter. But when I go away, I'm going to send you another comforter. I want to tell you the Holy Ghost is a comforter. When you're going through painful situations, when you're going through difficult times, when your heart is broken, when you can't shed another tear, when you're broken in pieces over situations, I tell you the good Holy Ghost, he'll comfort you, he'll keep you. Some of you know what I'm preaching about here tonight. He's brought you through some hard places. He's kept you through some trying times. He's comforted you in the night seasons he gave you songs to sing when you couldn't sing and when you didn't know what to pray for the Holy Ghost would groan utterings through you that would touch God thank God for the Holy Ghost he is a comforter for the church of a living God shut up my mouth Thank God for the Holy Ghost. You can't go through things like this. You can't go through things like you've been through. You'd lose your mind if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. You can't receive the kind of calls they've received. You can't receive the kind of news they've received. You can't go through dark times like this except the Holy Ghost comforts you. You can't make it through these kind of times. You'll crack, you'll fall apart, you'll fall to pieces. You can't go through these situations that life brings us without the comfort of the Holy But thank God that Jesus said, I'm going to go away. I'm going to give you another comforter. And so he did. And he's comforted us today Hallelujah. oh praise God shut up my mama oh Oh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Oh, the Holy Ghost. He is the Spirit of God. He's here with us. He's in us. Brother Scott, you help me if I get this wrong. I don't know why I do this, but that's just how I am. I hear stories and I listen to them and sit shut and said, you get that thing so twisted up and turned and I don't do that with the word of God, but I do when I hear stories because I can't remember things correctly. Brother Clendenin, he, he loves Brother Clendenin too. So you help me and pull my coat tail if I get it wrong, okay? And say, Pastor, no, that's not right. But don't do it here, wait till we get home. <laughs> Brother Clendenin said the night he got baptized with the Holy Ghost for the service. You help me if I'm wrong about this, but there was chicken wire, is that right, above the, on the ceiling there. And he said when the Holy Ghost baptized him, his hands went up and he stuck his hand, got his hand caught in the chicken wire. Is that right? But he said he didn't care. It didn't matter that his hand was caught in the chicken wire. He got the Holy Ghost. He was baptized with the Holy Ghost. Years ago, I was preaching revival down east. There was a little girl there. I say, little girl, she was about 17 years young. And I saw her in the altars that first night. I preached that week down there, and I saw her the first night, and I saw her in the altars crying and seeking God, and they told me she wants the Holy Ghost picture. So we got in there and prayed with her, and we prayed with her and prayed with her. And that night, she, she tarried and she stayed and she stayed until 
Finally, she was so worn out, so weak, and so tired. First, she sat down. Then she laid back. They covered her with a cloth. She's laying there praising God, praising God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. About 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, night in that service, she's still laying there. Hallelujah. It's only about a whisper now. She's so drained and tired. It's hot in that building. Hallelujah. 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 I said, keep on seeking me. God's going to feed you with the Holy Ghost tonight. I tell you, get that determined. He ain't going to let you leave there. He's going to feel you. You've got everything under the blood. You've got everything right with him. He's going to feel you. People left. A bunch of them left. They went on home. I ain't faulting them. I ain't mad at them. I'm just telling you what happened. A bunch of them left. About 11 o'clock that night, there's just a handful of us there still. We're all tired. I'm soaking wet. Tired. But we're down there beside her. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Betty Garen, I heard him coming. Oh, great God. I don't know how to describe that to you. I just knew he was coming. I saw the Holy Ghost. I watched the Holy Ghost feel that little girl, 17-year-old girl. And I how do you know she was baptized? Because I heard him begin to speak through her uh, in a language she had not learned or been taught. Uh, the Holy Ghost began to speak through her. Uh, I'm going to tell you what happened. Uh, when he began to speak through her, uh, she was not just whispered now. Uh, it was not just a weak whisper of hallelujah. Uh, but you saw strength come in that little girl, Lord God. Uh, and God baptized that 17-year-old girl uh, there in that revival meeting. Uh, amen. She was holy hunger for the Lord. I, I want to tell you here tonight. I there's a lot of things out there uh, that that flesh hungers after if you let him. Uh, there's a lot of things in that world uh, that that that, won't, that flesh wants to be satisfied with. Uh, but if you get hungry in your spirit, man, uh, you get hungry for the spiritual things of God. Uh, God will fill you up with the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, and you will realize uh, that nothing out there matters anymore. Uh, I found everything that I need uh, in the power of God in Jesus Christ uh, in the spirit of the Lord uh, God fill us with that power uh, clothe us one more time oh God we don't just have to read about it we don't just have to wonder what it would be like what it would have been like in those days if we will obey the Lord and tarry, we too will be endued and clothed with that same power that the early church was clothed with. I don't want to try to pattern this church after a business model. You see, the church has always and will always be controlled by the Spirit of God, the true church. And as the spirit flow, as the church flows and walks in the spirit and is led by the spirit, God will do the work. It's not us; it's He that lives within us. God will do the work through the church, through His church. That early church didn't have all the conveniences of the day. They didn't have social media. Isn't that amazing? They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have any social platforms. They didn't have internet. They didn't, they didn't, I, don't, I don't know that they took flyers and, and handed out flyers to people. But within the first three years after Pentecost, 25,000 people were born again. Some 25,000 people within three years of the day of Pentecost. We have social media. We have television. We have all these platforms. And ain't nobody being saved hardly. We've got everything we need except what they had. The power of the Holy Ghost. You can, you can shut down all the TV stations. Turn the internet off. Do away with the internet altogether. Get rid of printers and computers and all those things. Let the church get full of the power of God and she'll make a difference today. We, ought to, we, we should have already won this whole world to the Lord with all the, all the platforms we have. 
But the early church had what we don't have. They were full of the power of God. And they went out and the Lord worked with them. And they turned that world upside down. The Bible said in Ephesians 5 and 18, I'm going to close, I won't get to finish this. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. We must be continually being filled with the Spirit of God. Again and again, over and over. We have to be full and running over with this power. Nothing is full until there remains no more room for anything else. Nothing is full until there remains no more room for anything else. This is one of the reasons that our, our people in the church of God, I'll stay in this denomination, this denomination, one of the reasons that people in our pews in the church of God are not full of the power of God. They're not empty of everything in this world. I, I'm, I'm going to not get much further here, but I'm just going to close with this. God laid it on my heart, and I read, wrote a little note so I'd remember it. We were talking about it at lunch today, me and my, my boys. Sister Shelton and I went to Dallas camp meeting just a week or so, two weeks ago. How long ago was it? Just last week, week before. <laughs> we went to Dallas camp meeting in June. How about that? I told her, I said, I don't know why. I don't know why they don't see it. Or they don't want to see it. But in that camp meeting, there was nothing worthy on that platform. Nothing. Nothing. That choir was not worthy. The musicians were not worthy. Those preachers were wholeness preachers, conservative men. I'm going to tell you, the power of God was so thick in there, you couldn't have cut it with a knife at times. They didn't have any dance teams out there. Nothing was choreographed. They had no programs. They didn't have to bring this in and that in and smoke machines. And I mean, we got there that first night on Monday night, and I mean, it was there. The, whole, the power of God was there. I told Brother Shortridge, I said, this is, what I, this is what I was raised in right here. This is what I remember growing up in. I don't remember drama and dance and 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 gimmicks and gadgets and entertainment the power of God was there it was it was clean on that platform it was clean on the instruments the ushers were clean the preachers were, were wholeness men and, and my mom and them remember in those camp meetings back in, in Charlotte at the campgrounds great God Ray Hughes up there preaching T.O. Lowry Walter Atkinson up there. Some of those men of God in that day that was powerful. I remember as a kid being scared to death in some of those meetings. I didn't know somebody coming and running across the top pew going to step on my head. They'd run the bill. I mean, the power of God was evident there. And they'd, I don't remember ever seeing all the gimmicks and the gadgets. They just got up there and sang the songs and the preacher got up there and preached the word and Heaven came down and kissed the earth where we were. I said, that's what it was at Dallas. Then I go to some of these meetings and some of these revivals, and it's not, it's whirly on the platform. And that preacher's up there preaching about some kind of business model. And you got a dance team out there. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I can't even do it myself. I'm throw my hip out and my back out. <laughs> All the gadgets and the entertainment and people are, oh, it's so, so wonderful. That flesh is just laughing it up. But there's no power there. I told the boys today, I said, I don't go to them things not trying to feel nothing. I just can't feel nothing there. It's worldly, fleshly, and carnal.
Our churches are not growing. It's not working what we're trying to do now. Are you hearing me? It's not working, Brother Ball. We've tried to accommodate the world. We've tried to mix ourselves. And because we thought we could get more people in, if we get more people in, we'll have a better chance to get somebody saved. But it's not working. There's a decline in church attendance, not increase. Churches are closing their doors today. Preachers are leaving the ministry today. Everything they're trying to do, the model they've set themselves after, uh, is not working in this hour. I would to God that we crawl back in an altar and say, Lord, we've tried it our way and our way does not work. We've tried it our way. We confess we did it, try to do it in our flesh. Maybe their intentions are good. Maybe they're really trying to get people saved, get more people in the church. I want to tell you, friend, how you can't never win the world by becoming like the world. You can't use the world to win the world. You can't use worldly gimmicks to win the world. It still takes the power of God. It still takes the convicting work of the Spirit of the Lord. And the church needs to be clothed in that kind of power again. Amen. That we don't have to have gimmicks. We don't have to entertain. When we come to God's house, we know the Lord's going to be there. We know the power of God's going to be there. Because we brought him with us. When we go out in that world, we know we're going to make a difference. Because the Spirit of the Lord's in our lives. And the Lord's walking through his church in this land. I said, how can't they see the difference? How come they can't tell the difference? Everybody stand, please. I didn't leave one of those services at Dallas mad. I didn't leave one of those services frustrated. I didn't leave one of those services scratching my head thinking, what in the world is going on here? I left there and couldn't wait to get back to the next service. And I left there and couldn't wait to get back to the next service. There's still something to get in full of the power of God. You can't be worldly and have this power. You can't be carnal and have this power. But if we'll obey the word of God, if we'll empty ourselves of all that's not of God. And like Brother Clinton said, I've got to have the Holy Ghost or I'm going to die. Give me the Holy Ghost or I'll die. I want this church to be like the early church. I want this church to make a difference in this community, in our homes on the job. I want us to be the church out there in that world where we go. Not just say I'm part of South Ashburg Church of God, but I'm part of the church. I want to be the church where we go out there in that world. Every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Don't it break your heart for This young generation coming up, and that's all they're exposed to. That's all they know. They think that's okay. That's, that's all they know. They don't know the real power of God, many of them. Holiness is still the right way. Holiness will always be the right way. Walking in the Spirit. Being led of the Spirit. Being full of the Spirit. It's the right way. Sister Albright, come play softly, please. Just want you tonight, if you're lost, I sure do love you. I don't preach to be mean or ugly, hard. But I want us to go to heaven 
And I want us to work while we're here and, and, and not, just, not just doing things, but be effective in the work. Be effective in the work. If you're lost and you need Jesus, these orders are open for you. They've been open this whole service. You can come and be saved and know this man, Jesus. How many by a raised hand would say, Brother Shelton, I agree, there's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. You can know about Him and not know Him. Oh, but to know Him. The Apostle Paul said, that I, that I may know Him. In His sufferings, that I may know Him in the power of His resurrection. He said, oh, I count all things but loss that I might win Christ. That I might win Jesus. Sister Angela put on the sign, Jesus, He still saves. He still saves, Brother Benny. He still saves. Oh, great God. He still saves to the uttermost. He still saves souls. He loves you. He cares about you. He gave His life for yours. change your whole your whole existence your whole life there's nobody like Jesus if you need to be saved come if you're away from God come to these altars and let Jesus change your life tonight if you need to be sanctified we believe sanctification is the definite second work of grace subsequent justification that means after you've been saved you got to be saved before you can be sanctified Christ living in us there's some things we have to lay aside and some things we have to take up we have to lay aside the world the sinful things of this world Not only are we sanctified, but we're being sanctified progressively. God is sanctifying us. He's working in us. There are things when I got saved, as I began to grow in the Lord, God began to deal with me about areas and things that wasn't pleasing to Him. Some of those things were not necessarily sinful things. Maybe things that you could do or somebody else, but I couldn't do it. Because maybe it hindered me. Maybe it didn't hinder you, but it hindered me. I gave those things up. I wanted to. I don't like broccoli. I don't like the smell of it. But if the Bible told me to eat broccoli, I had to eat broccoli to go to heaven, I'd be eating broccoli every day. And I'd smile when I was doing it. All those things not of the Lord, you want to be rid of them. When you come to God and you don't seek the gift, you seek God. Lord, you promised that I could be have my own personal Pentecostal experience. I can be baptized with the Holy Ghost. If you're here tonight and you need to be sanctified, there's some things in your life that you need to lay aside, some weights, things that are hindering you from growing in God. Come on and do that tonight in these altars. Come on and do that tonight in these altars. Some things you know you need to lay aside, things you know that maybe they're not necessarily sinful things, but things God's dealt with your heart over that you cannot continue to do this because it's taken away time from me. God knows what's best for us. Maybe it's something that is sinful that you know you need to stop. 
Come on, let God sanctify you tonight. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, these orders are open. If you need to be refilled tonight, if you want to be refilled tonight, if you're hungry for more of God, hungry. John said, I must decrease that he might increase. Less of me, more of God. It's no longer I, but Christ that lives within me. These altars are open for you to come tonight. If you're able to, come and pray with some of these around these altars. Let's ask God to help them. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost.